Hey everybody, it's Jen here, and I was actually in the process of editing the video for today that you're going to get to see, and something was wrong with our camera. I'm sure some setting got changed or something, so the whole thing was in slow motion, which I could correct, but because of that, the audio was non-existent. So, I'm going to show you the video. Hopefully, you can still see the end product just fine and you can see some of the steps that David took and I'll add a little commentary here and there so that you know what's happening and we'll just make the best of it because I'm actually home with my son today. He's recovering from wisdom teeth extraction and so i um, trying to be mom and get this video done and <clears throat> excuse me and we're just gonna um, go with the flow. So I hope you enjoy. Talk to you later. This is a 30 inch teardrop swag and it can be hung either way. David is choosing to hang it in this particular direction and it needs to be shaped. It will come sort of flat. So it needs some work to be shaped and fluffed out so that it's not just flat against the wall. When you get ready to put your items inside of it, this will also make room for more stems and things to be placed inside. So David is finishing up the shaping process here and he will move along to adding stems but first the stems that he is going to be using remember these can be cut apart so he's going to cut them apart to make them go farther that way you can spread them out throughout the swag and have a more balanced look without having big huge pieces in places that you don't want big huge pieces. And remember that I will make a collection for all the items that David is using, but these particular items that he's using are Harvest Sunflower Pumpkin Spray, and we have a fabulous fall berry spray that he's using. And as you can see, he is separating it apart and using mostly pieces of each one and not necessarily the whole piece as one but with this sunflower piece right here he did use the whole entire stem to put that in at the bottom of the wreath whereas he cut the berry spray apart and if you're following along thank you for being here this is not ideal this is not how we wanted to do the video but there was no time to redo it this week David has been helping our wholesale warehouse team unload containers and we have had a lot of containers coming in and it is taking everyone we have to get all of that taken care of and we just didn't anticipate this problem but such is life. He's removing this sunflower because he's going to save it for later. We are super excited about the new jewels that we've gotten in. These come in different shapes, different sizes. They are acrylic, but they are a lot of bling for your buck. So make sure you check those out. David is adding wire to the end of the jewels and twisting that on so that he can wire it into the wreath. He's actually going to wire it through to the back of the wreath. So it's really nice and secure. And you can see how he just takes that wire and twists it around a piece of the pine to secure it. Now that the jewel is secured to the swag pine, David is not wanting it to move around. So he's going to add a little bit of glue. He's taking an extra stem that he has and dipping it in the hot glue. We melt glue chips in an electric skillet. And then he's just going to secure that to a piece of pine, put a little glue on the back, secure it to the pine, make sure you don't burn your fingers because it will stick to your fingers. It can be hot and he's wanting to give you a little warning about that. But now your jewel is in place and it's not going anywhere. He's going to repeat the process with a second jewel over on the sort of bottom corner of the swag by repeating the same process of wiring it in to a piece of pine and then adding some glue to make sure it doesn't move about. And I wish David could be here to commentate for you all, but guess what he's doing? He is unloading another container, <laughs> but he's talking to you here 
just about the placement of your jewels and how he's going to add some ribbon into this swag. And he's tying a bow that's a little non-traditional. This one has three loops only, which is not something that a lot of people do. But he wants you to bear with him and trust the process because he's going to take this ombre ribbon. It's like a copper colored ribbon. And the ombre ribbon, he's going to also just do a few loops. I think he ends up with four in this particular ribbon. He uses some wire to tie the center together and he's going back with his orange and making, let's see, two loops. He's going to secure that with some wire as well before moving back to the ombre copper ribbon. And this is the part where he makes one little loop and he's like, Trust me, it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. Wait and see what I do. And he starts adding those layers together with some wire to make his bow for the swag. Once all the loops are tied together, you do have to shape your bow. We have a ribbons and bows playlist that shows you how to make some different bows. We're also going to try to add a couple of videos to that this year so you have more ideas but here he's taking his wire he's going to thread that through the pine from the front of the wreath to the back of the wreath and secure it with the wire to the back of the wreath and then shape it again to make sure that it's balanced on the swag Now he is adding some ribbon, just taking it and wiring it in to the wreath and threading it behind the jewel and using the pine from the swag. It's not a wreath. I don't know why I'm calling it that, but the swag is using the pine from the swag to secure the ribbon in the places that he wants it to be so that the wreath is balanced with the colors and with the ribbon throughout and it's not just a bow at the top and then nothing else in the wreath with the ribbon. Now that the ribbon is in place, he's going to cut that. He makes a cut just across to separate it from the roll first. And then you can cut these however you want, whatever kind of tails that you like. This is just sort of his preferred method on the ends of the ribbon. This is a really funny part of the video where David is telling everybody, Jen says, I can't say so now. Because every time I started a new frame, he would say, so now, and we sort of got tickled about it, and he's explaining that, and we're trying to come up with other words that he can say, like next, or continuing on, and he's showing us some of the new jewels that we just got in that he's adding to the wreath, and we're just having some fun banter back and forth. I really hate that you're missing this part because it was pretty funny. David was all into it, thinking it was funny as well, and we had a good time. But sadly, you just have to trust me and hear me tell you about it now, because this whole part was just fun. Here he's adding in some of the other acrylic precious gems that we have. And he's wiring them in the same way as he did the larger jewels, but really no glue is needed because they're small. They're not going anywhere. They're not going to be flopping around too much. So just wiring those in will be fine. The gems that you see here actually come in a set of two, and he used two sets in the swag. So a total of four, he's using the floral wire through the loop at the top and 
wiring that into place for the top of the wreath, just like you did the other ones, making sure that the wreath is balanced. And this particular one toward the top, he does add a little bit of glue because it was a little bit floppy. Depends on where you place these on whether or not you might need the glue. And you can see our skillet there with our glue chips. The glue chips are actually discontinued. We still have some and have them for sale on our website, but our supplier has discontinued them. So we're in the market for more bulk glue chips because we go through a lot. You can melt glue sticks in an electric skillet, but not the high temperature glue sticks, just like regular glue sticks. So you don't have to have the chips, but we really like the chips, especially if you're going through a lot of glue. He added a little glue at the bottom as well and warns people again, don't burn your fingers because no one wants that. Remember that sunflower that he took off of one of the stems earlier? He removed one of the sunflowers from the sunflower spray. He's saving it. He's adding a stick to it that he'd cut off of another flower. And he's making a stem out of that sunflower and placing it in the top of the wreath, the top of the swag in the ribbon area where the bow is just so he has enough of that space covered. And he noticed that he didn't really like the top of the swag where the ribbon was missing from the sides. So he just made a couple of tails, one out of the orange, one out of the copper ombre, and he tied those together with some wire and he's inserting those on each side, trimming up the bottoms, so that the wreath will have a more balanced look with the ribbon. And he was very satisfied and happy with the end result once he did both sides of the swag. David is talking about how he wants the ribbon tails to sort of look like they're waving in the wind. You don't want them just to be straight and flat but he wants them to have some dimension to them so he is shaping them so they look like they're waving in the wind and this is the part where we admire david's beautiful handiwork and talk about how all of these items are available on our website shopdavidchristophers.com we have a collection put together for all the items that you see here so you don't spend a lot of time searching and if you're watching this video in August of 2024, we have over 90 items that are marked 30 to 60% off on our website that are fall related items and you get an additional 20% off. So we really appreciate you being here, sticking with us. Thank you for being gracious to us when things don't go well. We're doing our best to be parents to two teenage boys. One just started college this week. The other had his first football game this week and I had a birthday. It's just been sort of wild on top of all of the containers and shipments that have been coming in as well as our day-to-day -day work. So we really do appreciate your patience and support and we hope to see you the next time and hopefully we'll have audio. What makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of? I wonder sky sometimes hides behind the clouds maybe it's just like me a little bit scared of heights why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside it really makes me wonder